While Canadian parliamentarians are considering ratification of the new NAFTA agreement, there is a big unknown hanging over the North American trading relationship. And that is Donald Trump's threat to impose an estimated $17 billion worth of tariffs on Mexico. The U.S. president has threatened to impose those tariffs on all goods crossing the Mexican border as early as next Monday. And that raises a question of how the whole trade situation could affect the three-way trade between Canada, the U.S. and Mexico. Joining me now to look at the situation is Mexico's ambassador to Canada, His Excellency Juan Jose Gomez Camacho. Your Excellency, thanks very much for coming Thank in. Thank you, Martin. A pleasure as always. This is your first appearance uh, on our show. And, uh, it is, and I'm very happy. And I think we'll have a lot of chance to talk about things as they Anytime. evolve. Let's talk about right now where things stand uh, with these tariffs that could be imposed as soon as next Monday. How serious is it? Well, we, we take it seriously, of course, because it's, uh, it was a very clear um, assertion from the U.S. government. At the same time, we are not um, overreacting. Okay. We understand this is very complex. We take it very seriously. But nevertheless, we hope and we are reasonably optimistic that we can, through good dialogue and understanding with, with our neighbors find a, a solution. As you are probably aware, our foreign minister has been in Washington for the last few days leading a large delegation. Yeah. Tomorrow we will have a major formal talks with the Americans led by Secretary Pompeo. Okay. And in the meantime, a lot of conversation, dialogue with politicians, with U.S. private sector, businessmen, investors, think tanks, uh, congressmen, senators, to try to have a, not only a better picture of the landscape, but also to convey our message. Okay, because the, the threat is linked. I mean, President Trump has said that he's threatened this 5% tariff mm -hmm. on all goods because of what he sees as a non-enforcement of your border, the tens of thousands of Central Americans who are transiting through Mexico yeah. and going to the United States. He's linked a tariff measure yeah. with your immigration policy. Yeah. Are you working on the immigration policy or, or, or are you working more on lobbying the business no, community? No, no, no. We are, we are, we we are also explaining and what is it what we are doing on immigration and thank you for asking me. It's very clear today that in fact it's Mexico who is doing the heavy lifting on this. Mm -hmm. Hadn't been for us, for the work we are doing, the U.S. would be receiving probably 250, uh, the 250,000 more migrants, a quarter of a million more. That thanks to the work, uh, very hard work that we are doing they are not reaching the U.S. border. It's a very complex uh, issue, but we are doing really not only uh, the best we can do, but we've been very efficient. This is what we want to convey to the Americans. And at the same time, we need to say and explain that uh, you can't, as the president of Mexico said, try to address a, such a complex social issue in Central America th through tariffs. Okay. Is President Trump listening, though? Because as we found out as Canadians and as you found out as Mexicans, yeah. uh, with NAFTA, with the negotiations, it all depends on what President Trump has decided. Is he listening? Uh, we hope he will listen. And certainly all his team, cabinet, and other actors in the U.S. are listening to us. Uh, you mentioned lobbying the private sector in the United States, lobbying the Republican Congress. There's talk in the United States of even Republicans in Congress challenging the mm -hmm. president on this action. Mm -hmm. So are you, you have a wide lobby there trying to aim at well, different... Uh, I, I wouldn't say necessarily lobbying. I think we are informing, we are talking, we are understanding uh, each other. And the reaction in the U.S., not only from uh, Republican congressmen uh, in the U.S., but also border governors mm -hmm. or chambers of commerce, organizations of business saying this is a bad idea, it's not only because we are informing or saying or loving, it's because it is a bad idea. Mm -hmm. Also for them, because there's no one, um, uh, there's no way anyone can win from such a situation. If the tariffs are to go ahead, if they were to go to head, uh, ahead on Monday or after that, um, how difficult will it be in Mexico for your president, President Lopez Obrador, to go ahead with the ratification of NAFTA if those tariffs are in place. There will be an anger in your country, one would think. We are not there yet. What, what I can say is that uh, the president not only sent NAFTA, as you know, uh, last week to the Senate, but he's pressing on. Mm -hmm. And just this morning, the president of the Senate informed to the public that he's 
sending the instrument through the proper committees to um, get it done as quick as possible. So in terms of NAFTA ratification, no, 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 no changes in, uh, not, in our approach. There's not the temptation to go the other way because I was speaking to an observer last week who was looking at Mexican politics. He says the, the coalition, the support for President López Obrador, if those tariffs were to be imposed, there would be a lot of anger and it would be increasingly hard. Is there a thought then get this passed before the tariffs? We are not there yet. Uh, so what we are doing now is to press on, to go as fast as uh, possible as we planned before this was announced. So, so far we are not mixing, the tariffs have not been imposed. Let's see what happens. We are, again, as I said, we are reasonably optimistic that tomorrow we can have a breakthrough, but let's see. Canadians are discussing whether to go ahead quickly or just to wait on the ratification. Mm -hmm. We're asking ourselves the question, is, is there a rush for us to ratify here in Canada? Any advice to Canada? from Mexico's perspective? No, uh, no, I think Canada doesn't need any advice. What we can say is that we keep a very fluid conversation mm -hmm. uh, with them. Just yesterday, our foreign minister had a conversation with Minister Freeland, and com these exchanges of views uh, continue. We keep them updated on the challenge, on the issues, the substance, how we intend to proceed so Canada can also make their own decisions. Okay, well, Mr. Ambassador, thank you very much for coming in. We will keep in contact over the next few weeks. Anytime, thank you so much.